So in this problem, we're told that the velocity function in meters per second is given for a particle moving along a line. We're told that v of t equals 3t minus 8, and uh, t is in between 0 and 3. So we're supposed to find displacement, and then we're supposed to find the distance traveled by the particle during the given time interval. So let's just start with a. So it says find the displacement. So in order to find the displacement, all we got to do is take the integral of our velocity function, and then they give us our range here. So our lower bound is going to be 0, and our upper bound is going to be 3. So the function on the inside is just going to be our velocity function, so 3t minus 8, uh, and then dt, right? And so let's go ahead and solve this, and it's going to give us our displacement. So the antiderivative of 3t minus 8 is going to be 3 over 2t squared minus 8t, right? Because minus 8, we just had a constant, and then this becomes 2, right? Because we had 1 by by 2. So 3 over 2 times t squared minus 8t, and then doing it from 3 to 0, right? So if we go ahead and solve this, we plug in 3, 3, uh, it's going to become 9, right? Because 3 squared is 9, times 3 over 2 going to be 27 over 2, minus 8 times 3, which is minus 24. And then we can make this to be over 2, right? So 24 is the same thing as 48 over 2. And then this is just going to become minus 21 over 2, right? And then, so that's minus 21 over 2. Now we got to plug in 0. But you see if we plug in 0 into this, it's just going to be 0. 0 squared is 0. Times this is 0. There's like a t in every single one. So it's just going to be minus 0. Uh, minus 0 doesn't do anything. So it's just going to be minus 21 over 2. So the displacement is going to be minus 21 over 2. And then I'm actually going to clear the screen and then we'll do b. So this is minus 21 over 2. So let's do b. b says find the distance traveled by the particle during the given time interval. So in order to solve these, uh, like finding um, distance traveled, what you want to do is take your velocity function, right? So velocity is equal to 3t minus 8. And we want to find the places where it switches from positive and negative, right? So basically just take this, uh, set it equal to 0, and solve for t. So if we set it equal to 0, we're going to get 3t, uh, 3t equals 8, divided by 3. So t is going to be equal to 8 over 3. And so we're going to need this in order to solve. So t is going to be equal to 8 over 3. So let me write that t equals 8 over 3. And so now what we're going to do is create two different integrals. So one integral, and here's going to be our other one. And so what we want to do is start with our lower bound, right? So our lower bound is 0 in this. And then we're going to go all the way to the value in which we switch. And we just found that, right? So t, 8 over 3. So this is going to be 8 over 3. And then we go down to our next integral. So the lower bound is going to be where we switch again, so 8 over 3. And then our upper bound is going to be the maximum value, right? So 3. And then we just replace our functions on the inside. So 3t minus 8 dt. 3t minus 8 dt. And so with these two integrals, we're going to add them together. But the thing is, what you want to do is take the absolute value. We're going to add like the absolute value of each of the integrals. Because... Um, not every single one of them is going to be negative, but if they're negative, we got to make them positive because it's asking for the total distance traveled, right? So just like take the absolute value of these integrals when we solve them. So let's go ahead and actually solve them. So what is the antiderivative of 3t minus 8? Well, it's going to be uh, 3 over 2 times t squared minus 8t, right? We just found that. And we're evaluating this one from 8 over 3 and 0. And we're taking the absolute value of this, right? And then we're adding it to the antiderivative of this one is going to be the same thing, right? 3t, 3 over 2 times t squared minus 8t. We're evaluating this one from 3 to 8 over 3. So let's go ahead and solve these. So if you plug in 8 over 3 into this, it's going to be 3 over 2 times 8 over 3 squared. Uh, this is going to become 64 over 9, right? Because we square both of the numbers. This is minus 8t times 8 over 3. 8 times 8 is 64, so it's just minus 64 over 3. And then 3 times 64 is 192. And then 2 times 9 is 18, so it's 192 
over 18. So I'm going to make this over 3, right? So if I divide this by 6, right, because we're doing 192 over 18 minus 64 over 3. If I divide this by 6, 192 divided by 6 is 32. So it's 32 over 3 minus 64 over 3. And so if you go ahead and do that, it's going to be equal to minus 32 over 3. So when we plug in 8 over 3 into this, uh, we get minus 32 over 3. We have minus 32 over 3, then minus whatever 0 plugged in is. But if we plug in 0, we realize we're just going to get 0. So it's just minus 32 over 3 minus 0, which is just minus 32. So this whole integral, well, the integral is going to be minus 32 over 3. But we take the absolute value of it, right? So absolute value is just going to make it positive, 32 over 3. So this integral thing is going to be 32 over 3. Then we got to add it to this one. So let's go ahead and solve this one. So if we plug in 3, right, 3 squared, or 3 over 2 times 3 squared minus 8 times 3. 8 times 3 is going to be, or let's start with this side, actually. So 3 squared is 9 times 3 over 2 is going to be 27 over 2. Minus 8 times 3 is 24. But I don't want to put this over 2, right? So we can just write it as minus 48 over 2. And then if we subtract these, 27 minus 48 is going to be minus 21, and then it's over 2, right? So minus 21 over 2 is going to be the value when we plug in 3. So minus 21 over 2, and then minus whatever 8 over 3 is. And if you remember, when we plug in 8 over 3, it's going to be equal to minus 32 over 3. We did that on the last one, right? So if we minus minus, it's going to be plus. So we're adding 32 over 3. So I'm going to make these both over 6 so we can add them better. So I'll multiply this one by 3, right? So 21 times 3 is 63. So minus 63 over 6 plus, and then we multiply this one by 2. This would become 64 over 6, right? Or we're just putting it over 6. We add these together. Uh, it's going to become 1 over 6, right? 63, minus 63, plus 64, 1 over 6. Um, so we got that. And if we take the absolute value of it, right? Because that's just the answer to the integral. we got to take the absolute value. Uh, it's positive, so it just stays the same. So 1 over 6. Now we got to add them together. So this one, we got 32 over 3. For this one, we got 1 over 6. Let's make this one over 6, right? So multiply it on bottom by 2. So 64 over 6 plus 1 over 6 going to become 65 over 6. So this right here is going to be the answer to B. So the answer to B is 65 over 6. So yeah, that's how you solve these problems.